Good afternoon, everyone, and everyone in joining us on our Zoom platform. Welcome to today's regular meeting of Council of the Municipality of Jasper for March 5th, 2024. The time is 1.30 p.m. I will call this meeting to order. Firstly, uh, can we confirm, I understood that Councillor Wilson was joining by remote, he's not there yet? No, he won't be joining us. Okay, thank you for that. Um, I will in any event thank um, Councillor Wilson for performing the duties of Deputy Mayor for the last two months for January and February of this year and welcome Deputy Mayor Melnick into that role for March and April of this year. Councillors, you have today's proposed agenda. Are there any additions, deletions, or other changes to be made to today's agenda? I understand that the delegation that is listed has indicated that they will not be in there. Whether we leave it on the agenda or not is immaterial, but it does change the process of it. If there are no other changes, might I have a motion, please, to approve the agenda for today's meeting as presented? Councillor Keller, thank you. All in favor? There are none opposed. That is carried. As usual, we have three sets of minutes for approval today, beginning with the Legislative Committee meeting minutes of February 20th, 24. Are there any errors, omissions, or corrections required to be made to those minutes? If there are not, may I have a motion, please, the Council approve the minutes of the February 20, 2024 Legislative Committee meeting as presented. Councillor Hall, thank you for that. So all those in favor? There are none opposed. That is carried. We also have before us for approval today the regular meeting minutes of February 20th, 2024. Are there any errors, omissions, or corrections required to be made to those minutes? Being nothing, I would ask for a motion that Council approve the minutes of the February. Sorry, Deputy Mayor Mel, are you yes. making the motion to approve the minutes as presented? Yes. Thank you for that. All those in favor? There are none opposed. That is carried. And finally, we have minutes of the Committee of the Whole meeting of February 27, 2024. Are there any errors, omissions, or corrections required to be made to those minutes? Deputy Mayor Melnick. No corrections or, or, or omissions, but interesting to know we had 44 observers at that meeting, and it's encouraging to have our residents observing what uh, we are doing and would encourage observers to continue to join and, and uh, visit this uh, our meetings. Thank you for that. Deputy Mayor Melnick, do I have a councillor prepared to make a motion? Councillor? Waxer, that motion being the council approved the minutes of the February 27th, 2024 committee of the whole meeting as presented. All those in favor? There are none opposed. That is carried. The uh, next item on the agenda, item four, correspondence. We have two letters before us first. Um, from the Association Canadian Francais de la Verta. Um, I can find it again. That's just reminding us of. Oh, this is a request for um, <coughs> for a letter of support. Comments, observations. Recommendations or motions from council? Deputy Mayor Melnick. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, just a question. Have we been asked to do this letter in the past and uh, have rewritten that letter? Yeah. 
you give your worship from an admin perspective. Uh, I don't recall the OCFA uh, requesting a letter of this nature before. Um, my understanding is that they are uh, looking for support towards an Alberta Culture Days grant um, to support uh, activities uh, for the 2024 celebration of Alberta Culture Days. That activity has happened in the community a number of times. Um, I don't recall the municipality providing a letter of support to any of the applicants uh, in the past. Any other questions? Any other questions, observations, comments, motions? Councillor Waxer. Uh, I'm happy to make that motion, uh, particularly because there is uh, they they make the reference to uh, to working in collaboration with the Jasper Arts Guild and, and <laughs> library. So with that, I would uh, say that council authorized the mayor to write a letter of support for the ASEFA grant application for Alberta Culture Day. Thank you for that motion, Councillor Waxer. Is there any debate? I will call a question. All those in favor? There are none opposed. That is carried. Um, I will undertake to write that letter substantially in the format that they have suggested. Um, can anybody on administration advise whether there is a timeline for the submission of the letter? Your Worship, the applicant didn't provide any information in their uh, correspondence to council. We can certainly have a look at that and, and um, confirm, but uh, I don't have that information. Thank you for that. I, I won't let it languish, but it needs to be done, say, by tomorrow. Nice to know. All right, uh, moving on to agenda item 4.2. Uh, our correspondence uh, includes a letter from a local resident raising some issues and asking that the letter be put on the agenda, as is the case. Are there any councillors wish to comment with respect to that piece of correspondence? Deputy Mayor Melman. Thank you, Your Worship. And uh, thank you to um, Ms. Young Leslie, um, do appreciate the letter coming to council, um, identifying that there are opportunities where there may be conflict of interest. And I think it's important that um, we have an open conversation in a public venue about what conflict is and conflict is what conflict is and, and what received conflict is not. Um, I, I do note that. Um, there was a, a specific reference to yourself, uh, Your Worship, uh, leaving the room for a, a conflict regarding the Uplift Murrow Festival. And I, I would like to know what's not noted in the letter um, is when the conversation did come for the awarding of the contract to Pacific Western Transportation on the 16th of May, that actually the three councillors who would be in conflict, councillors Waxer, Keller, Hampy, and myself, respected the rules that are in the province of Alberta as it relates to uh, conflict of interest. And we did uh, leave the room and not participate um, in the uh, conversation. Um, I would just like to say, having done the training at the beginning of my term, um, having also served another term and recognized conflict of interest where I did actually leave the room during the MPL um, place, uh, conversations. Um, I'm well aware and, and do respect that we all as councillors need to make sure that we are not in a conflict situation. So in conclusion for my comments, I'm, I'm happy this came up and uh, I have a chance to address that, that we need to be able to vote under the MGA. We're required to vote, but we do also have to, on every vote, ensure we're not in conflict with what that particular vote is about, not a long-term interest or something down the road. It needs to be related to that particular uh, motion. And thank you. 
Thank you for that, uh, Councillor Melman. Any other councillors have any observations? Councillor Kellerhendy. Thank you, Mayor. And also, I'd like to thank Ms. Sue Young Leslie for the letter. Um, again, as Councillor Rexer, Councillor Melman, and I, at the time when um, some doctors was a proponent in the earlier contract, we excused ourselves. As on last term, or I think it was the term before, there was a conflict with Avis that also was under some doctors, and I excused myself at that time. Once the uh, contract went to PWT, I do not believe I'm in co conflict. Thank you for that. Uh, thank you both. Anything else? Councillor Waxer. I would just say again that. Uh, although I wasn't included in the letter, that uh, I would concur with what uh, uh, both uh, Councillor Melnick and Keller Arimpi said, that I do, do not believe I, in, on this vote that I would be considered ineligible. Thank you for that. Councillor Waxer? Uh, I will just add um, that I... I recognize and acknowledge that um, the three councillors who just spoke all did declare conflict at what I thought was the relevant time and did remove themselves from the discussion and from voting. Uh, once that particular conflict was resolved by way of the initial vote for the award of the contract, um, I would agree, although it's not up to me to agree, that the conflict dissolved and the fact that we're talking about transportation as a subject matter does not necessarily raise a conflict at all. It's when you're talking about um, the connection with an employer. So my own view was that uh, all three councillors acted appropriately, all of the rules. And it's important for the public to recognize that even though there is often talk in, in uh, public circles about the appearance of conflict, uh, the rules under the Municipal Government Act are very specific as to pecuniary interest that involves the conflict and if there is an opportunity that um, a councillor's employer or members of the councillor's family might benefit, then the councillor has a duty to declare a conflict and absent themselves, but that is not subject to any oversight by council. And further, the Act provides that in the absence of conflict, every councillor has a duty to vote. Councillor cannot escape voting on a difficult subject matter um, because they would like or wish to say that um, there is a conflict. So I, I appreciate the, the correspondence um, received from the residents. It, it is a very important matter um, and it's an opportunity to complain that council is aware of the rules and councillors have, and I am confident will continue to recognize when they're in conflict and so thank you all. Go ahead, uh, Deputy Mayor Melnick. Um, as such, um, I would like to recommend that council receive the correspondence for information um, for the record. Thank you for that motion. I will call a question, all those in favor? There are none opposed, that is carried. That takes us to agenda item five, delegations. We have been advised that that delegation will not be attending today. So that disposes of agenda item five. We turn to agenda item six, new business, beginning with 6.1, the 2023 property tax receivable write-off request that comes to council by way of recommendation from Committee of the Whole. Any further questions from councillors to administration or is there a councillor prepared to make a motion at this time? Councillor Keller, you happy? Thank you, Mayor Ireland. Um, I make a motion that council approve um, 
All right, the council direct administration to write off property tax uh, receivable for rolls 50 for the amount levied in the lines of 32,678.23. Thank you for that motion. Councilor Keller Rampey, is there any debate? I will call the question. All those in favor? There are none opposed. That is carried. Takes us to agenda item 6.2, sidewalk seating fees 2024. And for the record, I will confirm that after the date of publication of the agenda, but before today's meeting, we did receive a letter from one business establishment affected by the sidewalk seating. And we assume that all counselors have had an opportunity to see that letter, which may lead to some discussion today and uh, confirmation of how to proceed with this particular agenda item, it being again before us by way of a recommendation from the committee of the whole, but absent the information that was contained in the letter that we received, I think yesterday. Any discussion from counselors? Well, I might ask them uh, probably to you, Director Nadon. Um, the letter that we have received indicates that the use of parking stalls by this particular business are for part of the day only and they are not encumbered in any way. They're, they're signed for um, exclusive use during the business hours of the enterprise, but then are freed up again for the remaining hours of the day. Is it, is it possible um, for administration to calculate a percentage of the hours that are subtracted from the general use based on the information that we have. Thank you, Mayor Ireland. Um, I don't believe the permit and the way that it is issued specifies hours of operation. Though those happen to be the hours that that specific business operates, and uh, as outlined in their correspondence, they do remove the equipment or signage that is put in place to reserve those stalls during the day. So effectively, those stalls are, are returned to the paid parking inventory at night. So there, we uh, agree with that interpretation. It's reflective of what we've been observing uh, in the community. This installation is the only one that we have permitted under the commercial use of public space bylaw that is not uh, that doesn't fall under the category of sidewalk seating slash cafe is the definition that's in the bylaw. So essentially, everyone else is, is a restaurant or a an establishment that serves foods and food and beverage and had their installations are more they're temporary because they're seasonal but they're more permanent as in they stay in the parking lane overnight um so this is not something we had really considered it's a bit of a, a a single case scenario not to say that other retailers or tour companies or businesses that are not food and beverage uh businesses may want to avail themselves of that opportunity um if council wishes to change the rate there, I would I would suggest that from an administrative perspective, enforcing what time the signs come out and and like I said, a bit of a bit of a one off because it's the only one in that situation, uh, from an enforcement perspective is not ideal. It is possible, but uh, you know we would we be checking that every day at the given time the signs are removed and the the stalls are indeed returned to the. Big parking inventory is a bit of an administrative consideration that we have, but otherwise, um, considering that paid parking is in effect from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m., um, the request specifically that we received is along the lines of uh, providing a rebate based on the fact that from 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. the stalls are not in use. Uh, that represents a quarter of the period that the uh, paid parking is in effect, so, so that could be a measure for council to set a, a different fee for that. Um, of course, hours of the day or pay parking is busier at certain times, so that has not been factored in. That that quarter would be just a representation of time, not representation of use, perhaps, for pay parking. 
and um, I have some warning if if that's council's will, this is this will be as good as a time as any to make a modification to the bylaw and include the fee in there. And uh, so I would suggest use a parking lane prorated to hours of use for purposes other than sidewalk seating or cafe would then give us the opportunity to flex those hours or look at the actual use from other businesses as well. Um, and then I would suggest that maybe there's a minimum fee that is set, considering that even though the stalls might not be used all the time, there's still the administration of it and the enforcement and that, you know, if someone said, I want to use the parking lane for only two hours a day, then then how much would we charge them in that prorated fee? So, I mean, that's just something that we came up with um, since we received the letter yesterday. So options for council would be to maintain the fee or to give us the room to administratively prorate on the basis of the hours of use, and then perhaps the uh, including a minimal fee could be another approach to be sure that if we get a request for a very limited time, then at least there's some fairness in, in the amount of work that goes into putting those installations and permits and everything else together. Thank you for that, and thank you for your efforts to be so well prepared for today, having received the email. Only yesterday. Very, very greatly appreciated. Comments from councillors? Councillor Calarandi? Thank you, Mayor Ireland. I do really like the idea of working with other businesses. Um, I think if we can have a prorated rate, um, might also encourage um, other businesses that are in the retail sector uh, to want to uh, showcase their business um, more on the outside. But um, it's nice that you know they return those stalls back to the inn. We're able to make some money on those stalls, so I think it's fair that we it be provided, like you said, like you know, a quarter of the day they're not using it, they pay seventy five percent or sixty percent, seventy five percent. At least kind of set it that way. Um, I think that would be fair. Thank you for that, Councillor Kalarhuti. Comments. Deputy Mayor Malik. Thank you, Your Worship, and um, recognizing and knowing the business, um, uh, it is correct that, that uh, for a portion of the year that there is um, spots available after between uh, or after 5 to 6 p.m. Some of the tours during the prime time um, do leave at 5.30, so um, 6 o'clock would be probably more the the norm, or, you know, five o'clock when the, the spots are vacant. Um, if the spots are empty in early May, then there was no perceived revenue that we could have received anyway. So I, I would be willing to look at a reduction um, that takes into account the seasonality, maybe based on what we know from our parking information. Uh, there should be a minimum fee. And I think we could allow administration um, guidelines to perhaps um, ensure that we do have the minimum fee that was collected last year, which it was sixteen fifty, um, and uh, this could relate to the next topic we have on our agenda, where there would be an increase, but perhaps the minimum that we would charge for a parking stall is what last year's rates were, and I think that might be fair. Um, over the next two years. Thank you, Deputy Mayor Millick. Other observations? Councillor Waxer? Uh, I would probably agree with uh, uh, Councillor Kelleher and I, I think a, some level of discount would be in order um, as the, we do have hours where uh, where fee collection for paid parking is available. Um, but I don't feel prepared at this moment to, to have a recommendation as to what that would look like. Thank you, Pastor Waxman. Mr. Given, did you want to interject? Yeah, Your Worship, so I appreciate that this is a, a new issue. Uh, we had a bit of a discussion whether this should, the letter should go to the committee or but since this is a bylaw before council starts the readings of the bylaw 
um, we have some time to consider. I believe this is here for, I can even just check our agenda, I would say. Um, it is uh, for the first time um, and second time. So first and second reading of this bylaw. We certainly do have an opportunity to um, before third reading to make amendments. I don't know if we have to go back to parks for an amendment like this. I think they'd likely get a certification really as a financial matter. Um, administration could take away this item if council wished to provide a uh, direction to administration, maybe a motion providing administration for, to bring forward alternatives prior to third reading. That way, when we show up with the bylaw for third reading, we could have a maybe um, if council is interested, a, a um, actionable amendment for your consideration, rather than us trying to craft it off the fly here. Thank you for that. In terms of agenda item 6.2, does the recommendation to set the fee impact this decision? When we deal with, I, I understand the argument for 6.3, when we get there, we can deal with the bylaw over time where we did first and second reading today, if that. Um, but for setting the fee, does it matter whether we resolve at least in a general sense today before we fix a fee that it could be subject to, say, being prorated? Your Worship, I would say no. Um, what your 6.2 is uh, council, and I suppose it might even be debatable whether that, that motion is necessary if the rates of fees by law incorporates those proposed fees. But in any case, the motion itself really has no effect until the rates and fees by law or a by law containing rates and fees for sidewalk seating is amended. So council can give all the direction it wants in 6.2 that direction actually doesn't get activated until a bylaw containing those fees is established or amended. So, um, so I think we are still fine, to, you know, to that process that I'd like to bring back a recommendation. Again, subject to council wanting to receive a recommendation, you may say, well, the system that we have here is fine. Uh, this is a one-off case and it's not necessary to do that. Or you may say, no, it's worth looking at and we take your direction on it. But I don't think that Six point item six point two impairs your ability to act in six point three. Thank you. For that. So they stand alone as what you perceive it. Thank you for that. Um, if council agrees with that assessment um, and is prepared to deal with just setting the fee, if that is indeed even necessary, agenda item six point two. Let's focus our discussion on that. Are there any questions about um, that particular issue? That is the, the fee to be set for um, the use of public space for commercial purposes for 2024. Again, if I might ask you, Eric and Helen, um, it says sidewalk seating fees. This is the charge for the use of a parking lane, but there are other fees associated with the number of seats in a restaurant or a patio, for example, correct? So we're not setting those. This is just, just for the use of a parking lane, either for seating or for a walker. Thank you, Your Worship. That is correct. Um, and Actually, the way the bylaw is worded is use of the parking lane. So there's a bit of a nuance there between sidewalk seating and potentially other purposes. Um, I believe the wording in the bylaw is, is quite clear. So uh, to Mr. Gibbons' point, whether this uh, recommendation is actually required, it was a recommendation from committee to council, so it, it makes sense to have it here. But the, the true detail is in the next item, the rates and fees bylaws. But yes, you are correct that this changes the fee for the use of the parking lane. There is still a per seat fee that applies to installations that are on the sidewalk and not making use of the parking lane. And there's also another, another application fee that is also listed in the bylaw, but the only ones for your consideration today are for the use of the parking lane per stall seasonal fee. Thank you. 
Thank you for that. If there are no questions of administration regarding sidewalk seating fees for 2024, is there a councillor prepared to make a recommendation? Pardon me, a motion. Deputy Mayor Melnick. Thank you, Your Worship. I would make the motion that council, I move that uh, council approve an increasing the sidewalk seating fee for the use of parking lane uh, to $1,850 per stall in 2024 and $2,050 per stall in 2025. Thank you for that motion. <coughs> Councillor Milnick, is there any debate? I will then um, speak to the motion briefly. I, I was challenged um, with the recommendation from committee to council. Um, only because I, I think at long last, um, we have been able to discern the value of a parking stall. Um, we have for several years now provided an opportunity um, for business and the way that we word the bylaw, it's not restricted, but in practice, um, almost the only ones who make use of it are restaurants and not only then do they get the opportunity to conduct business, uh, commercial business in public land, we are now that we know the actual value of the stall offering another discount, which I think um, is not necessarily an equitable way to treat neighbors, say, in, in retail. Um, you might benefit more either from the parking or as taxpayers would benefit from the increased revenue. So while I, I continue to support, in particular, the patio program, I am not convinced that um, those who operate patios need a second benefit on top of the benefit they've already received, which is the benefit to conduct their commercial enterprise on a public space. So I, I am in favor of increasing the fee, but it should be more reflective of the actual value to the taxpayer of that particular parking stall or any parking stall. And it shows, I think, greater focus on other businesses that might well argue that they would benefit more from the parking stall than they would from um, somebody using the same area for their own income commercial business. So I, I'm simply opposed um, to the amount, not to the concept of bringing it up or to what we now know is the base point for determining the value of a parking stall. Councillor Keller Henry. Thank you, Mayor Arnold, and I agree with everything you say. Um, for me, I think it has been a very challenging couple of years for the restaurants and the outdoor seating is starting to bring them back. It's been a very challenging venture. Um, the retail stores that are around these restaurants have all come and said to us they want the restaurants to have the parking stalls in front of their businesses because it allows businesses to those businesses. And I do agree that down the road, it should all become equitable, but I think we have to build up a little bit to get there. Um, it's just what I'm hearing on the last business walk when I went to Community Futures and just going in and out of businesses this year, I have heard it's been the worst winter since the 90s. And I think for start driving more businesses, to these business by having outdoor city, I think to go right to the value of the stall, I think it's just too much at once. Thank you for that, Councillor Keller Rempe. Any other debate? Deputy Mayor Mellon, your motion, you may close if you wish. Thank you, Your Worship, and I, I agree with um, you and the fact that um, we do know the value of a stall now, 
and um, we can demonstrate to business that we are recognizing the troubles that they've had and um, are cognizant of, of rate increases. Um, although, um, you know, we could move to the, the value that we've calculated. Um, it will be interesting to see over the course of the next year or two if that value holds. And in fact, it may go up. Um, and with our increased parking fees, I'm sure it will, which um, with the proposed um, uh, bylaw that we're talking uh, about here, will give even more value to the businesses of how we're assisting them. Um, I would leave it to then a new council to reevaluate if they wish to continue that practice of discounting parking stalls to restaurants. Um, but at this point, I'm, I'm comfortable that uh, we've re kind of reached a balance given the winter that we've had, and hopefully we'll continue with the summer that will continue to grow on or build on last year's. Thank you for that. Um, that closes the debate. I will call the question. All those in favor? Opposed? There is one opposed. That motion carries. That takes us to that takes us to agenda item. Sorry, go ahead, Councillor. Maryland, in the motion that was made, we didn't make a motion for um, if council is willing uh, to ask administration to bring back a rate for um, non-restaurants that would like to do sidewalks um, in our like to use parking lane like the uh, business that had approached us to bring us back a rate uh, discounted rate that we might be able to apply to the bio correct and i was hoping that we were going to do that under oh. agenda item 6.3 okay as we sorry discuss now no that's okay. quite all right as we discussed the rates and fees by okay. that's where that comment is appropriate so um, you already made it <laughs> you're ahead of me um, so that suggestion is that as we um, consider giving first and potentially second reading to bylaw 260, we include instructions to administration to bring back an amendment to reflect a prorated amount in those cases where the parking space can be available for at least part of the day. Deputy yeah, Mayor Mellon. And just a clerical note, we have a, a small typo uh, under section 3.1 of the bylaw where the use of the parking lane in 2025 is listed as 2,150. And I believe it should be $2,050. So as we would be voting on or any motion that would, uh, I guess for clarity, would we need a motion to amend? The bylaw to reflect that change, and then we could vote on the bylaw. I think a, a motion to amend the schedule would be appropriate, and then we could vote on the bylaw. Um, you are right, there are different numbers. Um, and which, which one is the right number? Your Worship, if I may, I would suggest the number that you just passed in the motion on the previous item is the right number, right? So whatever direction council provided there would be what should be reflected in the bylaw. And uh, Deputy Mayor Milnick is absolutely right. That is a type of what was said as, at committee as a whole was 2050, not 2150. And um, Your Worship, I look to you to guide us through process, but you might want to do first reading, then have an amendment then go to second reading. And I would suggest that um, following formal direction, so to send administration looking at um, a, a different fee for purposes that are not sidewalk seating, some of the wording in that description might change as well to be more specific. 
but certainly we understand the intent. There's still a chance to make that edit before third reading. And as discussed earlier, I don't think it would impact uh, our ability to get certification on the bylaw. That is uh, solely Parks Canada telling us that we have jurisdiction in this area. So whether we add a fee, which I think would probably be what happens here. So following for further conversation at Committee of the Whole, then the next regular meeting, we would probably add a line to that table that is whatever wording and fee uh, committee ends up landing on for this use that is not sidewalk seating. Thank you for that. And your description of process is exactly right. We should be first reading first, and then we should be able to amend. So if there is Councillor prepared to make a motion to the council read the first time bylaw number 260, being a bylaw of the specialized municipality of Jasper in the province of Alberta to provide for the adoption of rates and fees. Then I would welcome that motion. Thank you, Councillor Keller Harandi. So that is a motion for first reading. Any debate on that? I'll call the question. All those in favor? There are none opposed. That is carried. So bylaw 260 has. Now receive first reading and Councillor Melnick, do you want to make a motion that by the second reading the schedule be amended? Thank you, Your Worship. I will make that motion that Schedule A under 3.1 under the use of parking lane for 25 and beyond, that the number be amended to reflect $2,050 per year. Um, and then we can proceed to the next uh, step. Um, that is a motion then to make that amendment to the schedule. Is there any further debate on that? I'll call that question. All those in favor? There are none opposed. That is carried. And I would propose then um, a motion to read bylaw 264 the second time as amended. And then I would propose a motion to direct council to return for third reading with the other amendment that has been discussed. If, if everybody's comfortable with that process, is there a council councilor prepared to make a motion that council read for the second time bylaw number 260 being a bylaw of the specialized municipality of Jasper, the province of Alberta, provide for the adoption of rates and fees as amended. Councillor Waxer, thank you for that. All those in favor? There are none opposed. That's carried. And then finally, who has wording for <laughs> Councillor Hall? You have the wording. I'll give it a try. And I look to admit if I need help in this one, uh, direct or make a motion to direct the administration to bring forward a recommendation prior to third reading to reflect a prorated amount in those cases where parking stalls can be used for purposes that are not sidewalk seating. Or walk rooms, I presume. Or walk rooms. Your Worship, I think from an amendment perspective, we understand the intent. I think uh, the term that's used in the bylaw is use of parking lane. All right, everybody understand that motion? In particular, um, administration understands the motion and, and can action that motion. So if there's no further debate, I will call that question. All those in favor? There are none opposed. That is carried. So in terms of sidewalk seating and the rates and fees bylaw, we will be good until um, administration comes back at a future meeting with recommendations for changes to third reading and provide Correct? All right. That's correct, Your Worship. Thank you for that. That takes us then to agenda item 6.4, um, added by Councillor Hall, a request to attend. Federation of Canadian Municipalities 2024 conference, which is going to be in Calgary this year. Councillor Hall. Thank you for that. Mayor Island, I'm just seeking approval uh, to attend FCM this year. I've already been once in my term, but I'd like to take advantage of it being so close to home. 
Thank you for that. So, uh, Councillor Calabresi. Mayor Arla, may I also ask Councillor if I can also attend FCM in May of 2024 in Calgary, as I also have been at FCM in this year. Thank you for that. Um, I think it's open ended. Um, there's a blank there so we can appoint councillors. Um, you said May, is it May or is it June? June, June, June. We don't want to send you a May. <laughs> <laughs> any, uh, any further discussion on the motion? I am certainly supportive. FCM is a great conference to be able to attend, and when it is in our own province. Saves all sorts of money. Um, we do have to come back at some point and look at our policy anyway, which was crafted in days when uh, there was a three year term. So councillors were entitled to attend once per term and could always apply to attend more frequently. We've kept with that even though it's a four year term and it doesn't match up. So I have no hesitation in supporting a motion to approve the attendance of. Councillor Hall and Councillor um, Pellegrampi uh, at the 2024 conference in Calgary and recognizing that councillors who have never attended an FCM in this term would be entitled to attend as well because that is in keeping with policy. Deputy Mayor Mel. Thank you, Your Worship. I would like to make the motion then that Council approve the attendance of Councillor Hall and Councillor Keller Ampey at the Federation of Canadian Municipalities Annual Conference and Trade Show in Calgary on June 6 to 9 in 2024. Thank you, Deputy Mayor Melnick. Is there any debate on that motion? I will call the question. All those in favor? There are none opposed. That is carried. That completes agenda item six, new business, takes us to agenda item seven, notices of motion, of which there are none. Councillor reports. Uh, Councillors with matters to report at this time. Deputy Mayor no. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, in the continuing efforts to uh, take courses and webinars that assist uh, counselors in their appointed roles. Um, tonight and Thursday of this week, I do have training sessions as it relates to Community Futures West Yellowhead. It's a series of 15 different sessions uh, varying in time from one to three hours on various topics with the end result of um, hopefully building better councils, better boards and uh, more constructive and, and productive uh, organization. So that along with a um, webinar, I do intend to uh, view on Thursday, which is about drought preparations here in the province. Thank you for that, Deputy Mayor Miller. Mr. Keller, thank you. Uh, thank you, Mayor. And on March 8th, uh, I was to attend the Trans Canada Yellowhead Highway Association, but unfortunately, I will not be able to attend. But I think Pastor Wilson is my alternate, and he shall be attending uh, by Zoom instead of me. I will be attending through Zoom on March 15th, the uh, Evergreens board meeting. And um, I have to say, I did enjoy it in our strep plan last week. Uh, Thursday and Friday, and I found it excellent. And uh, just like to thank uh, the administration for putting it up. Thank you for that. Councillor Keller, Randy, any other reports? Uh, I will report briefly uh, on the matter of a bit of discussion uh, last Thursday, Friday, of our uh, strategic priorities retreat. Uh, legislative Committee met today uh, work on the procedure bylaw was um, painfully slow um, it's a difficult matter to address uh, it's very very broad in scope but we are whittling it down and after today's meeting we are hoping that by late summer we will have a redrafted procedure bylaw to bring to council so um, be assured that that 
work is continuing in some of the very matters that we discussed last week. Um, continue to be discussed at the legislative committee and are making some progress. Uh, and I think that uh, in addition, um, we we're making again progress, although a bit slow with respect to the uh, Jasper Municipal Leasehold Asset Society and the potential transfer of lands both from the society to the municipality or alternatively to the new uh, Municipal Housing Corporation. Um, and that has a sort of target date now of June of this year. So again, um, matters progressing at the Legislative Committee. If there are no further reports on upcoming events, Friday of this week at 1045 is the flag raising, um, Frank Wilburton flag raising at uh, a cold Jasper Elementary School. So everybody's welcome to attend that. Um, Parks Canada annual public forum uh, for week today at the Activity Center. Jasper Park Chamber of Commerce general meeting March 13th. And do we know that that's a breakfast meeting? Please. Thank you. And are there any other events um, that should be brought to the attention of council? All right, if not, um, in less than one hour, we cleared that again. I am, I am open to a motion to adjourn. Councillor Hall, thank you for that. All those in favor? There are none opposed. We are adjourned. Um, thank you all, and thank you to those who watch today's proceedings on our Zoom platform or will do so in the future. Good afternoon.